Hello and welcome to the Ghosts of Tsushima State of Play Impressions. I am joined by Parker Aiden. Hello. How you doing, Parker? Good. I'm well. A little sunburnt. I've been outside yeah. all day, so. But we're here. <laughs> we're both fixing our hair because we have quarantine hair, and I need a haircut so bad. So, yes. so badly. I have one scheduled, okay. but it's not for two weeks, so we'll see if I survive. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I'll see you in a, in a couple days. You look like a Bigfoot, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, overall, just uh, at the top of this, the Ghost of Tsushima state of play, did you think it succeeded? Do you think it was a good showing overall? Yeah, I okay. really did. It, it sold me on the game. I hadn't been sold. I love Sucker Punch as a developer. And there was still something that I was like, I'm just not too sure about this game. But by the end of it, I was like, they have they've won me over. I agree. I totally agree. Um, I feel like the not sold on it thing was about how everyone was feeling. I could be wrong, mm-hmm. but uh, I mean, it, it's a cool premise. It's a by a really cool studio. But I just feel like everyone was like, I'm interested, but that's about it. Kind of like borderline interested because it seems like one of the big titles that Sony has. Right. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Overall, I, overall, I think it looks really, really well. It worked really, really well. Okay, they highlighted like from what I s- could tell, like four major things. It was like exploration, which we'll get into. Uh, stealthy combat with Ghost. They co- they like, called him Ghost, which I thought was kind of yeah. cool. Uh, customization of a Jin, which is like his actual his actual name, kind of like a uh, split personality thing here going. I, I dig it. I yeah. dig it. Being the psych major that I am. Um, <laughs> and then they had the like cinema aspect like a samurai cinema aspect mm-hmm. with a uh, photo mode included yes which looked so, amazing especially because they were like we're gonna let you make videos with it too yep we'll get into that we'll get into that okay i want to start <laughs> with the exploration what do you think of that first bit that in- included really freaking cool things like uh no hud to start off with mm-hmm. and then you have wind that you can call on to like i'm, I'm grinning because it's just really cool uh, wind that you can call on as like a not a waypoint but it just like leads you in the right direction yeah. and I thought that was really really cool and really really smart what yes. do you think about that? I, I was always really worried when they said there's no waypoints in this game like you have to rely on just you know knowing the way of the land and whatnot and I was mm-hmm. like ooh. I always man, worry I about like, stuff like that yeah and it's like I love to have my hand held in games I don't I mean I'm Same. I can handle puzzles throughout the game but I'm not like I like to have clear guidance and direction. Uh, So I was really worried. But then once they introduced the guiding wind, I was like, oh, we're totally good. Like this, there's still a map. You can still set a waypoint. Like I want to go here specifically. Mm -hmm. And then you can use the wind to help you make sure it's in the right direction. And it honestly kind of reminded me a little bit of like Breath of the Wild sort of thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are saying that. So uh, can't go wrong with uh, Breath of the Wild comparisons for sure. Uh, but you said it pretty well. Like at first you're like worried and then the wind thing came up and you're like, oh, we're good. And I feel like that's a weird thing to do. It's weird to go from I don't know to like overly uh, anticipating those expectations as in a way like it just overdid it. Like it went, mm-hmm. you think it'd go from like I don't know to OK, but it went from I don't know past OK to that is really cool. You know what I mean? It made, it made that yes. jump. Yeah. Especially because you don't I mean, like you said, there was no HUD. And yet that's Mm -hmm. such like a HUD mechanism that's built into the gameplay now of the game, which is really cool. I totally, totally agree. And there was another thing uh, with animals. Like there was a bird that was just flying by him. I didn't catch Mm -hmm. exactly what that was for, but it's more to do with the lack of HUD, I'm assuming. So, yes, yeah. Yeah. Just really cool stuff that I'm seeing. And I have something written down here about like that. Well, elements like that of the open world uh, have been done in games, but it feels like they're... They're taking elements that have been used before, and they're just putting a slight change on them. And I feel mm-hmm. like that's the right route to go, um, as in do, uh, putting something in your game that's familiar enough so people don't get overwhelmed or they can jump right in, but still putting a little tinge on it to where it feels new and fresh. And I think they just nailed that on every aspect of exploration. Yes, I agree 100%. Awesome. Okay, and then, so the second thing, I mean, anything else you want to go into on the exploration, or do you think we covered it? I think it's pretty good. Okay, cool, cool. So the ghost, not Jin, the ghost, which I thought was really cool. Uh, stealthy combat. What did you think about that display? I was like, oh, I'm not a stealth person, but this looks super good. 
And right. And I love that they have, because, you know, I loved Infamous. That was such a fun franchise. And I like to see that they're kind of carrying that path forward where you can either be a hero or you can be infamous. Like there are two different types of ways you can use your powers. And it's cool because mm-hmm. this is like there's two different totally styles of gameplay. You can either be mm-hmm. a strong, honorable samurai and like fight straight up front and you just seem like a powerhouse. Or you can be super stealthy and sneaky. And I can't think of the right word. Um, kind of like a snake, I guess. And, you know, just use whatever mm-hmm. tactics are at your disposal to... Uh, get the job done and I thought that was really cool to see especially how they showed it off in two totally different settings of the same setting yeah no, I'm I understand. Words. <laughs> the, no you're good the presentation that they that they used with this was really effective like they they uh, something that made me laugh was they pointed out like throwing something to like you know gather them to that one spot like a mm-hmm. like a distraction and they're like yeah. you can use fear as a tactic and I'm like okay <laughs> like it <laughs> seems like something that's been done before but no one said the word fear you know what i mean yeah um which and goes back was... to the thing of exploration where they have a bunch of stuff we've seen before they're just putting a little spin on it and i think that the same thing can be said for the stealthy gameplay yeah and it was funny because when i was watching that portion specifically i think i said out loud this is what i expected when ubisoft and xbox were saying they were going to showcase gaming or gameplay last week at their uh, inside xbox for this month and then it was just right. a lot of trailers that were like you know in game and just weird i think we talked about that on the last podcast episode we did we did yep it was, i was like the same thing i was like this is the type of gameplay i would have wanted to see from valhalla but we're not talking yes. about that so um <laughs> but i will going using that as a little springboard here uh segue there we go that's the word um i have written down here uh gameplay reminiscent of assassin's creed but as like your character would be like a samurai Batman of sorts. Yes. You know what I mean? Which yep. I'm pretty sure is a comic line somewhere. It's got to be. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but I feel like, which I mentioned before presentation, it was the Assassin's Creed gameplay, but you're as like a, a samurai Batman, but it's with polish and presentation with the state of play that just really, uh, it did it for me. So uh, good on them. Yeah. After that came the gin customization and i feel like all games after fortnite have to have some kind of customization not faulting it i just feel like mm-hmm. if you don't you're kind of you're missing out on even if it's not uh you know customizable things you pay to get i just feel like you're missing out on a part of the game there but what do you right. think about that showcase of uh of gin's uh clothing and stuff like that i thought it all looked really good i love that there's different mm-hmm. styles they said that there's you know different purpose um different tactical advantages it's not just about the style which is sometimes yeah. like cool uh like in monster in a world i'm always like i love how this looks but all of the extra things on it aren't good mm-hmm. so i'm not going to use it um I, I could be wrong but not to say assassin's creed thing again but i'm pretty sure maybe origins didn't but odyssey has a function where you can like if you like how a piece of clothing looks you can carry over an ability from another thing and use it with that look does that make sense Ooh, yes yeah not to keep bringing mean, up Assassin's creed but they should they should definitely go that route it feels like the right route yeah because even monster Hunter has layered armor that they slowly you know oh this is layered armor finally that you can start using which is cool because then it is i love the look of this and now i can pair it with these different things but still have what i want and it would be cool if they had something like that, but I was still really impressed with all the different customization they showed off for the clothing. It all looked good. I was I didn't really see a lot that I was like, not wearing that. I, <laughs> yeah, like, I, mean. I will probably wear that. <laughs> and I, I didn't know where to put this part of it, but I don't want to skip over it. You can pet the dog. Yes. What more, what more do you need? What more do you need? Thank so. you, Andrew Goldfarb, from what I've seen on Twitter. <laughs> I, he was the I, one pestering the animators. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Rightfully so, rightfully so. I wasn't going to bring up Goldfarb, but that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> uh, the last thing on here was the Samurai Cinema, which was the surprisingly, like, photo mode stuff usually isn't my thing. But this game is just so goddamn beautiful that mm-hmm. having this kind of love and care put into a photo mode... It, not just a photo mode, but like a black and white mode, the gradient mode, which there's some director that they they said, Kurosawa. I might be getting that wrong. I should have written it down. I'm an idiot. But uh, yeah, you get what I'm saying. The black and white, you can probably yes. pop like the red in there probably too, I would assume, because that yes. missed opportunity if not. But yeah, um, what do you think about them going all in on something like that? 
I love photo mode. And I mean, it's just so cool. I love seeing when games come out, especially when I'm playing them and I'm sharing my own. But then just seeing my Twitter feed filled with all of these pictures and it inspires me to then try to get some cool art. And it was really cool to see the love that they're giving this photo mode, especially the fact that you can like add in moving parts to it and then do sort of like a still video, kind of like a GIF, I guess, is what it looked like to me. And we'll see if that's what it ends up being. Maybe like a silent little short film of sorts, kind of like that. Yeah. Which is very, very reminiscent of Samurai Showdown type of stuff. From what I've seen, it's very like that style. Yeah, and I, I mean, for me, it's really cool that they have the all Japanese like voice actor, voice cast version of that. I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna get into that. You can mode. choose English or Japanese as well as the black and white mode. Yeah, the one gripe I do have on this was when they changed over to the Japanese audio, it looked like it was still mapped out on their mouths. This is just a stupid gripe, but it looked like it was still mapped <laughs> out on their mouths to still be English. As in, like, the the words weren't matching the lips, which bothers me a lot. I cannot watch anything on Netflix if it's like that. I, I just can't. Yeah. Yeah, I thought yeah. at one point I was like, the mouth looks kind of weird, but I didn't. it didn't register that that could have been why. It probably just registered to me because I always look for that kind of stuff. I'm a stickler mm-hmm. for that kind of stuff. So immediately I was like, nope, mm-mm, not, not going to happen for me. But yeah. So overall, let's rate this state of play comparing to the other ones. Have you seen all the other ones? Yes, state of, place? of course. Okay. Uh, in comparison to the other ones that have come before, where does this one rank, do you think, on them? I, I mean, I think this was a really good one. They came out, they said it's going to be about ghosts, and it was, it was just that about ghosts. Yep. yep. And I loved yep. that. Uh, so then the expectations were set right. They showed off a hearty amount of stuff, and I still feel like there's a lot of surprises because I think the last time we'd seen it, the uh, Jin had like a grappling hook. He was maybe using some sort of like fire or magic thing, I want to say. Uh, so I think there's going to be a lot of surprises still that we didn't see, but this was enough to sell me on the game and get me in. And I didn't leave feeling like, oh, well, I was expecting, yeah, I was expecting something else and there wasn't a big hype moment. It's like the expectations were set right. I went in, I enjoyed it. They sold me on it. I totally agree. Not to bash Xbox, but I just feel like, I mean, it's easier when you only have one game to show, I'm sure. Right. But I just feel like the expectations were a lot better set for this state of play than whatever the Xbox thing was called. I need to freaking figure out what that thing was called, for Christ's sake. Inside Xbox, I think, right? Wasn't it? Was it actually called that, though? I don't know if this was an inside Xbox. Who knows? You do some investigative Mm -hmm. reporting here? Yes. Um... I I almost thought it was like a third-party showcase, but it probably wasn't titled that. I think it was Inside Xbox May 2020... This X, from news.xbox.com, <laughs> the headline is X, Inside Xbox May 2020 Episode Recap. Uh, okay, so, so maybe about, it wasn't Inside Xbox. And yeah, maybe just the very whole special thing. First look, first look at Xbox Series X gameplay. Okay, maybe it was called Inside Xbox, and I'm just a doof. Um, but I think maybe the COVID thing just made it seem so different to me. Because, like, yes. they don't usually do... They're usually all live, right? Like, on a stage and stuff like that. Or at least I a don't, good chunk of them. Yeah, I don't tune into them too much, but I feel like from what I've heard of them, there's just pins all around because they've had a few oh. that have been like really big. I think there was one that was indie focused last year, I want to say. That was kind of a big deal, but for the most part, okay. I feel like it's more in passing, which again, I've not watched many of them. <laughs> so I'm Fair kind enough. of just talking out of my butt right now, but... Hey, you and me both. It's all right. So yeah, I totally agree with you. I think this state of play was probably, if not the best, the top two. Um, the only one I can think that might outdo it was, was it their first one or their second one that had um, the Iron Man VR one at the beginning? Great question. I don't remember, I don't remember either. Specific. But I just felt like that one, the one that had Iron Man VR at the very beginning, that one was paced so well. And it had clearly, I mean, a lot, lot more expectation there because they had more games to show. But I thought the pacing of this was good. It wasn't too quick. It was not slow, but it was, you know, just walking you through it. If you didn't know what the game was, now you definitely know. And they didn't, mm-hmm. uh, they still kept some of it close to them, co- close to their chest enough to warrant the $60 price tag. Um, but yeah, so 
Now, the meat and potatoes that I think about this part is if you had to guess the review score of this game before playing it and before it coming out, what do you think? My gut is I immediately jumped to eight. I think it'll be eight. an eight for sure. I'm hoping like it, it'll so be you're saying, So you're saying the floor is an eight? Yes, the floor is the an ceiling, eight. It, the ceiling is a ten or a nine? I you think you can hit that ten? ten? I think it could I think I totally agree. I think I think I can see it getting seven, seven fives, just if maybe everything they just showed was the interesting stuff. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Maybe they did show a little too much. We're assuming they didn't, but I feel like they didn't. Um, but let's just say in a world where that was, I feel like, yeah, the niches would probably run their course and then this would get a seven, five. I can see that happening. But if I had to guess a score, I would guess nine, nine, five. I think because they seem to be going for that 10. They seem to be yes. really putting effort into these niche mechanics that for me are working without without having any hands on and without playing it, of course. But for me, the presentation of that, it was working for me. So I, if I had to guess a score, I would guess a nine. And it's been six years because Infamous Second Son was 2014, which then First Light came out later in that year. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's been they've had six years where they've worked on this game and i'm sure it hasn't been all that game the first year might have been you know trying out other ideas pitching stuff but it is really cool to see them you know they've already had a game replace ps4 but now they're really pushing themselves and i think this does have a lot of potential to i for me they've been on the map but to put themselves on the map for other people as well they, they've clearly been on the map, but if if they nail this game, this puts them on the same course as Naughty Dog. I think if they right, really right, nail right. this game, then maybe not, you know, Echelon is still Naughty Dog, don't yeah. get me wrong, but I feel like they would definitely be in the same conversation uh, as far as first party Sony. And that's what I'm, um, yeah, that's what I'm saying, because you think of Gorilla with Horizon Zero Dawn. I mean, they had Killzone, mm-hmm. they, were, they were respected, they were known, they were on the map, but then good, good once games, Horizon Zero fine Dawn games. happened... Like, they were at the peak of that mountain then. Like, they were part of that really renowned sort of group of developers. Yeah, Horizon really did uh, gangbusters for them, for sure. Um, And I would be remiss if we talked about Sucker Punch and did not talk about Sly Cooper again. So, did you think they were working on a Sly Cooper game before this was announced? No? No. I would love it. My heart would be so happy and die. (laughs) Yeah, I think they sold the rights anyway, but I was just like... There's a point zero zero one chance that they haven't done anything for a long time, and then they announced this, and I was like, oh, okay. But, yeah. yep, I think that's going to do it. So, overall, Parker, you think it was a pretty damn good say to play, right? Can I? Is that, is that correct? Yes. You can quote me quoting you on that. <laughs> oh, I don't think it's how that works, but that's okay. Yep, we're Parker, I agree with, with you. Uh, <laughs> we're rolling with it. Parker, I totally agree with you. I think that uh, this say to play, uh, they nailed it. Um, I want to play this game more. So then uh, before watching this, and I feel like that's that's the goal, I think so. Uh, they hooked me in. So cool uh, exploration, cool like in niche ways that are just possibly pushing the industry forward, which I think is really, really cool. Uh, mm-hmm. The ghost gameplay, stealthy, stealthy Batman, Samurai. It's dope. Um, and then Jin customization. We just kind of gave it a little thumbs up. Uh, everything looked good. Um, and then the cinema. The cinema part's my biggest thing. Uh, I think that black and white, the gradient, I'm going to have a lot of fun with that. And I usually don't uh, have a lot of fun with those photo modes. But I think this could be the one that hooks me in. All right, Parker. What do you think? It was great talking with you. I'm very happy for this game. I will hopefully have The Last of Us 2 all emotionally, you know, within me and contained. Is it like a full month after? Yeah, it's about a month. I think it's the 19th for the last of us and the 17th 17th for july okay two days short of a month okay i don't know that might not might not be enough time who knows who knows face what happens to the two of them joel and ellie but this isn't about joel and ellie this is about the ghost and the ghost (laughs) and the ghost because they're not the same person they're not the same person no all right thanks parker any uh last words Parting words. Sounds like you're gonna die. Go, Jesus. go support Ghost. <laughs> yeah, support Ghost and his bird friend. That sounds like a like a great idea to me. And okay. His horse. Yeah. yeah, we need a, a name for that horse probably. That'd be great. Um, if I can we'll custom name it. it only ask for so much. Roach. Wow, original. Very original. 
<laughs> okay, we're, okay, we're pandering. I'm going to wave. Goodbye. You should do the same. Bye-bye. See you later.